Hello my strangelings and welcome to tonight's video. Tonight's video is a legend or maybe it's an urban legend. I don't know how to classify it as. But I do know it's an is one of the unsolved mysteries of the world. And it comes from England and it's about Spring Spring Healed Jack. And according to the legend, he was um, yeah, he was first spotted in 1837, but it was very unclear who Jack really was because of his description. Some thought maybe he was human, some thought maybe he was a human with powers, or some even thought he was a demon because of how he was described. And he was described always wearing a cloak wearing tight-fitting clothing, could breathe white and blue flames, and could make uh, superhuman leaps over fences, well, tall fences, really tall fences, uh, houses, buildings, and even really high walls. But there is a famous reporting of Spring Hill Jack, and it was given by Jane Alpaz. I'm hoping I'm saying that last name correctly. As she reported that in February 1838, she had claimed that a, a gentleman wearing a cloak had rung her doorbell late in the night and then took off his cloak and began to attack her but she was lucky enough to that her sister was there to scare him off the scene and then a few few days later a similar similar account had been reported by a Lucy Scales as she had reported, she had been walking with her, with her sister in Limehouse when a figure leaped at her from an alley and blew, uh, and blew flames in her face. And with those two accounts given by Jane and Lucy, there were now sightings of spring-heeled Jack all over England that had even reached parts of Scotland. Can you believe that? Just from those two uh, famous, I guess you could call them famous, reports about this, about this creature. But anyways, um, but his victims, the victims of Spring Hill Jack were always, always, Young women, and they all described it, um, young women who all described the same. A mysterious man wearing tight-fitting clothes with a, with, uh, red eyes. This is where the demon part comes into play. And claws for hands, which again verifies with some theories. Could have been a human. Could have been a human with some mutation what, or whatever, or even a demon. So, as the story spread of Spring-Hilled Jack, it began to take on life, take on more with, take on life. The stories took on more life than any other, apparently, legends because it went into uh, many plays, uh, novels, and even uh, Penny Dreadful that were all featuring Spring Hill Jack. And that didn't stop the reports of sightings of Spring Hill Jack, but it grew even more bizarre. 
really don't know how. Couldn't find any information on how it became bizarre, but it was just bizarre. Anyways, but then there was one last sighting uh, of uh, a Spring Hill Jack, and that was in Liverpool, uh, Liverpool, 1904. And it will always be a mystery on who really was Spring Hill Jack, who terrorized London for uh, from uh, 1837 to uh, 1904. But it is all kind of interesting. Like, where did he go? Why did he disappear? Was he only trying to do this to see if he could terrorize people? It's still an unknown mystery. Un but any of still an unknown mystery. I'm sorry. I swear, I can talk. I think I'm just overly tired. But anyways, uh, it's still an unsolved mystery today on who who Spring Hill Jack really was. So that is it for tonight, my strangelings. And tomorrow night, I will be playing a game because I think all next week um I won't be playing a game but um I might tell more lowers or um read more out of my Edith and Lorraine's uh, book that I have just because of some things that are coming up next month and I'll explain more about that uh, in next weekend's video. So until then, my strangelings, I'll see you guys all tomorrow night. Bye for now, my strangelings.